Growing up as a South Asian in the United States, I was raised to be both Indian and American. And while on one side, it's pretty cool to be a cultural chameleon, to find community with two very different groups of people in two very different parts of the world, there are some aspects of my being that get lost in translation. You know, those moments where you approach a situation and your cultures may push you to approach it in two opposing ways, where when you say something, you're not quite sure which of your identities is speaking, or if it's a mix of both. Today, I'm sharing a conversation I had with my friend Gurian, who's also Indian. I can really identify why it made me feel uncomfortable. We toy with some behaviors and beliefs that seem to be at odds between our Indian and American selves. Okay, that feels so cathartic because I've had these experiences too. And talk about aspects of day to day life that just seem to get lost in translation. It's so awkward, it's so stress inducing. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you go out and you buy something, you use your card to go get stuff mm -hmm. because you know that. That whole understanding, like, all right, I'll get it this time. Yeah. It'll balance out. That whole understanding, like, it'll balance out. Like, I trust you enough for you to take care of me mm -hmm. when I need you to take care of me. Mm -hmm. But right now, I appreciate your presence. I want to take care of you because I want to deepen our, our friendship, yeah. our relationship. That comes back with that whole Indian understanding of generosity and yeah. hosting, showing people a good time. I want to keep that part of myself, too. I like that you identify that, though, because I think when like maybe South Asians are towing the line between like should I bend or request people or should I not, the emphasis suddenly goes on to the money. It goes on to like, oh but is it gonna be even based on the money? When in reality this practice is not about the money, it's about no, we're doing this so that we can have a deeper relationship with each other, so that we can spend time with each other. Don't get me wrong, if I pay for you, yeah. I'll be like, hmm, yeah. I pay for you a second time? You didn't yeah, say yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. Like, I do, in the back of my mind, I do expect them, I do expect them to yeah. just intuitively put exactly. down a card the next time, you know, if I put mine down, because that means how, that just kind of shows you how much I trust you. Exactly. Um, so yeah, there is a culture of trust too, but I feel like it's exhibited in different ways. Yeah. Um, it's not so granular, I think. Right. It's more about the action, about reciprocating, rather right. than it being like to a T, like yeah. 150 versus 150, you know? And and sometimes like the generosity culture can go to the extreme yeah. too, right? Like you're just hosting people nonstop. Exactly. That's why I resonate well with this Western culture. Mm -hmm. You know, my space, mm -hmm. time for myself, self-care. Yeah. Um, because that's just important too. And something that I think about a lot in relation to like culture and linguistics is like the words that exist in our languages and like how that informs our experiences. There is no word in Hindi for boundaries, alone time, self-care, boundaries, it doesn't exist. Yeah. So to be able to like have people pushing that type of, this is how you can improve your relationship with your friends, draw boundaries, it's like no, because of the language you need to approach this differently. And this goes back to this concept of uh, money, yeah. right? And even in the Western world, there is this concept of, okay, you're you know, the kids are moving out of the house, mm -hmm. they become financially stable on their own. Maybe, if, depending on their situation, they can ask for help from their parents. Yeah. I've experienced some of that, and I've kind of understood some of that from my peers too. Mm -hmm. uh, but the amount of time my mom would just like, just shun me if I'd be like, well, this is my money, I can yeah. spend this. Yeah. I can spend yeah. it on something if I like to. And she's like, what? Yeah. Can you consult with me for this? And I was like, <laughs> I don't think you would actually care. I just, yeah. I'm just telling you, and I think yeah. you're reacting to it because I'm telling you. This whole concept of my money, Yes. Mm -hmm. it's being shared. It's it's very it's very much lost in translation because yeah. there's no sense of my money. It's like, number the money, which is our money uh -huh. in, in Malayalam. This reminds me of a word in Hindi. I don't know if there's a similar word in Malayalam, but it's called Huck. And huck, 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 yeah. Huck, okay. And huck is like, I don't know, like a right, I guess, that you have with, I would say, your family and maybe close friends. For example, I've had a lot of American or Western friends ask me, like, let's say, let's say I'm in a, in a scenario where I need help or like I don't have enough money or I don't like have a job or something. They have asked me like, oh, do you think your parents would let you move back in? And for me as an Indian, I'm like, well, that's my hook. Like, I, there's no asking. I can show up at my parents' doorstep and no matter how much space they have, what their condition is, they will always take me in. Yeah. Because that's that's my right as a child. Um, you know? Right. You know, people talk about like, oh, if your mom shows up at your door, like, set some boundaries. Like, these are the times available. I'm like, that doesn't go with Indian parents because they have hook. Boundaries? Yeah, what? there's a hook that they can come to, come to you whenever they need. Could you ever imagine paying rent to your to your mom or do you like what how would you what do you think about that? Yeah, I was actually gonna ask you the same thing. Like uh -huh. personally, 
I would do it, but I also don't think my mom would ever ask me to do that. How, how do you think that conversation would go? Like, if you, it's mom, very, let me pay rent. <laughs> yeah, it's very, like, it's, it, the other thing is, like, I feel like it's not so much of a conversation as it is in a lot of Western culture. Like, huh. I feel like, at least in my experience, a lot of things are just shorter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're just, like, shorter conversations okay. in Indian culture. It would be like, okay. yeah, it's like, it's like, can I pay your rent? She's like, no, 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 I don't want you to worry about that. Like, no, shh. And yeah. like, that would be the end of the discussion. It's like, don't even, don't you dare even ask me that question. I, I want that independence, but I also want yeah. to maintain those, those family ties and uh -huh. closeness. Uh, and money is, it's a weird line to draw with that. Yeah. But I think, you know, you can only bring yourself closer to your family and stuff when you open up about those things. We had a girl out here, right? Yeah. So this is... This is where we, I feel like we, we didn't say anything, we <laughs> yeah. both were just like, yeah, it's because, you know, we yeah. experienced this growing up. Uh, but it was so funny, so we had the grill out, mm -hmm. and uh, I was just getting all the ingredients out and putting it all on the table. Yeah. I had my friends, like, they were just like standing around, being like, <laughs> what do I do? And I'm just like, yeah, you can put it on the table. They're like, what do I do? And I'm like, I don't know how to give you instructions, just yeah. like, you know. But then you, you were just like, what, do you, what can I do to help? Yeah. And I was just like, uh, and you're like, all right, it's okay to say yes, you need help. And I was yeah. like, uh, yeah, uh, maybe you can like grill the burgers or something. Yeah. I didn't really know what to do in that situation. Mm -hmm. So there's like that communication yeah. piece that I think gets lost in translation yeah. with the differences in cultures. That and that's kind of what I mean mm -hmm. about like conversations are just shorter or non-existent in Indian culture. Mm -hmm. Where like, I imagine like if I was with a bunch of Western friends, it would be like, okay, so like, what do you want to do? Are you going to take care of this? And then yeah. it would be this like divide of responsibility. Somebody would take care of this, we would talk through everything. Yeah. And I feel like in that situation, it was very much just like a, we didn't talk through it, so nobody knows what to do. And as like an Indian person, I was kind of just like, no, you just pick up something and go. Like, just yeah. pick up something and do it. This goes back to like the cultural confusion parts, mm -hmm. because there's been definitely some times where I'm trying to be proactive. I'm yeah. trying to anticipate the next step. And I'll be like, oh, let me take care of this. And I'll start moving things. And they're like, wait, wait, hold on, hold yeah, on. Just yeah. like, just wait. And then I'll tell you what to do. Yeah. I've never really had that experiences growing up because if I was waiting to be told what to do, yeah. my dad would be like, why aren't you helping? Why aren't you helping? Yeah. You know? Like do something, don't be on your feet. You know, like yeah. it's, it's definitely trained how I interact and react to yeah. uh, different social it's something I notice a lot when I go back to India, um, is like when I'm surrounded by my cousins and stuff, they're always kind of like noticing what needs to be done around. And it's yeah. like, you know, like some aunt, aunt needs something or she mentions that, oh, oh, I'm kind of thirsty. It's like, oh, I'll go get something from the store. It's just right downstairs. I got it, I got it. And like, they're not waiting for it, yes. They're just yeah. perceiving what you want and making it happen. Um, whereas I feel like there's a lot more like permission involved in Western culture. I think there is a very much a transactional yeah. kind of relationship, right? Um, okay, you got it this time, how much do I leave? You asked me for a favor, now what can I ask you in return? Yeah. Not, uh, not always, but I feel like, yeah, it kind of goes back into... And that really stresses me out, like I find that I'm keeping track because I think the other person is going to keep track, mm -hmm. uh, which puts a lot of stress on my relationships because for me I know like, it's not about it being even, it's about like, me being there for you in whatever capacity you need, and then I know you'll be there for me in whatever capacity I need. Right. Uh, it's not always going to add up because life doesn't work that way, but... <laughs> As long as it's not like, you know, financially super drastically different. Do you feel close enough to me if I need to do it too? Something that I've kind of thought about is like whether my friends ask me for favors. And I've actually noticed that like a lot of my non-Indian friends won't. Um, and it makes it harder for me to have a close relationship with them. Okay, so that's really interesting that you talk about that, right? Because there's this like social psychology aspect mm -hmm. of how you can build rapport. Uh -huh. with someone else for the first time. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's this concept of the Benjamin Franklin effect where uh, in order for you to get someone to like you, to get a little bit more favorability toward mm -hmm. yourself, uh, you should ask that someone for a favor. Mm -hmm. Let's say your neighbor's with someone. You want to borrow like, an ingredient or you want to just borrow their dress for an event or something. Yeah. I feel a lot closer when my friends do that with me and I'm able to ask them. Okay. You talked about this in one of your TikToks like the culture of Dubai. Yeah. Of, like, you'll always figure something out, being scrappy, being um, uh, resourceful, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, there's this notion that's embedded into Indians of, like, our first option is not going to be to buy something. It's going to be, can I ask 
someone, if they have it, can I borrow it from someone? Can I figure it out with the stuff I have at my house? Right. You know, you always think of those options first. So that's kind of the mindset I come from when I'm like asking my friends for favors. Like, hey, can I borrow this? Can I use this? Yes. You know? Like before I go, I'm very cheap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like before I go buy this out for myself, is there, can my mom make it for me? Exactly. Can, do I have a friend who already owns it? Can yeah. I borrow for a short term? I think to ask someone, um, you, you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable position. Yeah. Or you're, you're making yourself vulnerable um, to prove that you know, you're not self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. You do require the help of other people. And I do think that, you know, that community aspect, the collective aspect that you do see in Eastern cultures, yeah. in Indian households, it's so powerful, it's so strong, but it needs to, I think it has the potential to be translated and channeled into Western ways of doing things. Yeah. Right. In Hindi, the way you would ask someone to do something is like, yeah, karke do na. And na is like, kind of softens it, like karke do is like a command. Yeah. And karke do na is like, Oh, can you like do it for me? Yeah. And it's just, it's such a small tag in the question that it doesn't add this level of formality. Whereas I feel like please has like a formalness to it. I actually feel less close to people when I say please versus when I just feel like, hey, can you do this for me? Yeah. Uh, in, or instead of like, hey, can you please get this for me? Versus, hey, can you grab this? You know? Yeah. Oh, all the time. Yeah. And it's so interesting because <laughs> that American part of myself is still there. So when I go to India and my cousins will be like, oh, shut it off. I'll be like, yeah. excuse me? <laughs> <I'm> like, please? <laughs> but I can't ask them to say please. I'll be like, no. well, do you think you are? The king or the queen or something? It is also awkward when I go, my my aunt, every time I go to India, mm -hmm. she she roasts me because I used to say thank you to her a lot for like, giving me food, yeah. giving me plates, giving me, you know, stuff that you know a normal host should do when yeah. someone's visiting with them. She's like, Kuri, are you gonna say thank you all the time when I do anything for you? And I'm like, yes, thank you. <laughs> She's like, thank you, Kuchama. That's how yeah. she makes fun of me. I do think that like saying thank you is really awkward sometimes, and then also saying like sorry. Oh my yeah. god. So I, I mean, this is nothing. This is not news to anyone, right? Mm -hmm. Like saying sorry is awkward sometimes when you're talking to your family members. Yeah. But but I also do like the concept of sorry and forgiveness because yeah. it heals so much. Mm -hmm. It heals, you know? If you've done something wrong, say that you've done something yeah. wrong. Um, I mean, you could also show forgiveness in different ways, but I do think that there is something important about acknowledging it and, you know, addressing it verbally mm -hmm. um, instead of, like, giving up <laughs> fruits. And uh, that's yeah. a very Indian thing to yeah, do. Yeah, right? yeah. No, I resonate with that, especially because, like, you know, saying those words are sometimes very difficult. So. Yeah. The fact that you said it shows that you've done something that's hard um, versus like finding a cop out is like, yeah, this is nice, but you didn't do the thing that's actually hard. Yeah. Um, and that's something I do really appreciate about Western culture is that there are these specific words for things that yeah. hold a lot of weight. I think right now, in a lot of contexts, mm -hmm. this is any type of context, whether you're Indian, whether you're American, I feel like asking questions is something that both people can do a lot better. Yes. Yeah, Maybe it needs to be addressed more often now, just mm -hmm. because you know there's stories to tell. Yeah. And there's stories you can ask your parents, whether they're from a different background. Uh, there's stories you can ask your friends, because that's how you kind of understand why they're behaving the way they're, yeah. they are behaving. Not being afraid to be the first one to initiate yeah. a conversation. Yeah. It, it can be a really stressful thing for people, but I think it can bring people closer to. And I've noticed this about a lot of Indian people. They're yeah. like very quick to ask what they want to ask. Um, they don't really hesitate and it's kind of goes back to the same thing about like there's no real boundaries. They want to they want to know like what are you doing? Where where are you living? How is it going? What about your roommate? Who's your roommate's name? What yes. you know they want to know everything. Yes. And they'll ask and they'll just rapid fire and they will grill you. And I think in a Western context that's seen as like genius like that are you in, in, interrogating? Yeah. 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 And that's something I really appreciate about Indians. And as a rebuttal to that, yes, right? Like I think sometimes I'm like, these are some surface level questions. Get yeah. to know me. I want to get to know you too, and I don't want to feel awkward asking you like, oh, what did you do to get in trouble with your parents? Yeah, I'm asking you to get some stories about you so I can understand you better. I I want more from my South Asian side uh -huh. myself, and I think here that's especially as podcasting, mm -hmm. content creation. You know, asking those deeper questions, like, what's your story? That opens up so many cool possibilities for yeah. conversation and for a relationship.
You're like, okay, well, this was an awesome conversation. I'm so glad we got to do this because I've thought about these things a lot. I'm sure you have thought about these things too. So I'm really glad we got to sit together and, you know, hash it out and, you know, just get to explore this, yeah. this concept some more. You should go follow Korean. He has a really awesome podcast. He has a TikTok. Oh. Um, his podcast called Serotonin. We discuss like positive psychology. Has um, interviews with entrepreneurs, artists, everyone in between. Um, I genuinely love your podcast, so I definitely recommend you check it out. It's available on Spotify. Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and uh, my website has has everything. Everything will be linked in the description. Sweet. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you next time. Um, they do carry different weeds. Yeah. Cultural context too. <laughs> 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 Cultures, <laughs> language, psychology. We just hit all the buzzwords in our tag room.